My past will outlast me Ask me if I agree with my choices now I'd say no I'd ask if that's me Cause I don't recognize myself anymore Hey everybody, welcome back to, or welcome to episode 12 of the Roundtable Show. Uh, on this week's show, my co-host Maya, you know, it's getting convention season. She's actually off interviewing Laura Eisenhower right now. So my co-host this week and, you know, interdimensional exit buddy, Canadian Spanja, will be right by my side. Um, and we're absolutely honored this week Uh being joined by a neo neo shaman from the Bronx in New York, and one of the most interesting people you're ever going to speak to is Fearless Frank Castle. Hey, hey, hey thanks for having me um, out today. It's been a while. Um, I'm in the new place. I'm set up. I'm ready to rock and roll. There's a ton of information that needs to come out, and you have been on fire, my brother. So... For as much as it is about everyone else, I think today I might help make it a little bit more about you and maybe me and the lady sitting next to you that just keeps disappearing into the spaceship. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Every This is all relevant. It's all about having fun because you're going to have to laugh a little because if you don't, it's going to freak you out on every level. So you got to have fun with this. Um, if you guys are interested, check me out on my podcast uh, at Fearless Tribe on YouTube or Frank Castle's Fearless. And then if you want to check out my music, check out Sons of the Sons. And uh, you could basically add Sons of the Sons on YouTube. Come check us out. And uh, shout outs to my man, Kevin, the other half of the group. <laughs> Oh, and before we start, ladies and gentlemen, everyone listening, prepare for our frequency. Ground in, let's get ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have a woo, but I won't do that oh, to the listeners. This, <laughs> she almost wooed. We're, we're just going to have to. Yeah, I love it. So <laughs> um. We're actually going to have one of your Sons of the Suns track on as the music feature this week. I, I just went with the title that I'm reading on the YouTube, and it's uh, Breathe Life Into This. And it's a really cool track, and I hope people stick around. I know last time I featured your track, I was actually uh, watching the audience while it was running during the premiere. And 18 out of the 25 people that watched the premiere stayed, stuck around for your music. So nice. I you appreciate guys that. Have that high vibrational frequency music that just touches your soul and gets you rocking inside. And you guys should really stick around for this. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, about the episode, uh, it was uh 1159. And it was an alien contact episode, and I had a list, so that's why I'm trying to jump right into this. Uh, with two people, there was uh, Stephen and Leslie. They were a husband and wife couple. And the first one I wanted to ask you about, because I have my own answer to this, everybody does. Have you ever had a UFO, UAP, I don't even know what the other acronym or short forms are now. Oh, UAP. UAP, thank you. Uh, in real life. Like, have you seen anything, you know, just... Yes. And this existed multiple times. Yeah. And a bunch of them has freaked me out each time. So I had a classic one when I was very young. Uh, I was in Yankee Lake, New York. So this one was on Fox 5, did a um, like the top five UFO things that happened in, uh, I, I guess, at all in the Northeast or some something that where the ship came over the police station. And then the police lady came outside 
because it was just going slow through the town. Well, my mother woke me up. I was young. Um, they brought me outside. My mother and my father were still together. And then they were like, look up, look up. And they were, the road that we were on had like six homes, right? So you have to like come up the road to see your neighbor. And then everyone's mailboxes were on the other end of the road. And we looked up and there were lights just shooting all over the place, um, like red, red colored. I, you couldn't tell if they were discs or not. They were moving all over. But then it was national news by the, the morning. We woke up. There were newspaper people. Everybody wanted to talk to everybody. And then years later, it was on television. We, I was like, wow, that's where I was at. I didn't know that um, it flew down to the police station and they went outside and looked at it. But there were so many reports on it. So I was like, wow, that's pretty crazy. And uh, I tell this story of Space Jesus. I'm not going to get into the whole story about it, but I was not under any psychedelics. I walked outside and it was early it was late morning, early afternoon, 11, 12 o'clock. I was singing to my cat, holding it like a baby. And then the, the message from the birds, um, the tweets sounded like a song. And I said, oh, look, they're singing a song for you, little buddy. And I, then I was like, wait, that's weird. That's like a song. And I turned around. There was a guy standing there. Turns out to be Space Jesus. The thing is, right be, um, across the street above the house was the UFO. And there were a whole bunch of guys that I thought were his security. They looked like straight out of Star Trek and they were wearing the blue and they had black and then blue. And then one guy had silver. The only other place I kind of saw that was on uh, the Galactic Federation ship. When I met Ashtar, he had the sash. So I was like, oh, I guess that guy's in charge. That's the only other time I saw that. <clears throat> but when I asked Space Jesus, are they with you? And he was like, oh, absolutely. I said, so y'all just sitting there over the roof like that? And they were like, yep. Just like that. It was like one of the ships that are behind you. It was just a regular saucer looking ship. So well, I'm like, wow, yeah, I, I don't know how this all connects, but he's on. And he's sitting on the ship. With everyone. This actually takes me to a recent one, and I've talked about it on a few different shows that you and I were both involved with. We were having an off the air conversation, you know, call it backstage, call it what you will. And you basically broke it down, you know, Don, how many times do you have to be on the ship to realize there's a ship above your house and you've been on the yeah. ship, right? You know, that was <laughs> the whole moral story. Well, I get on the, the fart book the next day. And I'm in a, a Canadian UFO uh, experiencer group. You can report your photos, whatever. And 22 miles northeast, or yeah, northeast of us, it would have been fucking off from our house. After we were done talking about it, full color picture, this thing gets about three snaps, and it it's a craft taken off from the our direction of the house when we would have ended talking about the ships. And it's like, I know I didn't see it, but goddamn, how do you deny it? Yeah, I went to Canada. I went to Lindsay, Ontario, and I was on like this little, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my old rap partner lived in town there, and um, we were out on his property, and it was like a little hill, so you can just see everything around you. So we'd go out there and write lyrics and stuff. And for, for a Bronx kid, I've never seen that. Like, just look up. You could see the northern lights from there. And that was creepy to me. We got really high. So then jets were coming by, like jets, like fighter jets. And I was like, yo, what is that? You, you Canadians are bringing fighter jets like up here. Like you can just they were right there. And then he's like, nah, they're chasing something. So then I'm like, what are you talking? And he wasn't a UFO guy. He wasn't an anything guy. He was a regular guy. Right. And then he's like, nah, we get UFOs up here all the time, but we think they're, it's our stuff. They're testing because the way they chase them. So they were chasing them in loops. So this, you saw this circle. It was just a circle. Come out, yeah. stop, go up. That was it. And then the jets were going one way loop, then looping inward the another way. And I go, I think it's sitting. I don't think it disappeared. I think it's right above. It looked like it went up but i think it just disappeared and it's sitting there yeah i said you know um i Dude, don't know it's weird stuff man you're 
you're actually talking about my old stomping grounds like crazy synchronicity we know where Lindsay is like it was like an hour away that's where i had to do these exchanges with my son and his father every other sunday and yeah, I, I, I was there I, for a while that's wild i i with an ex had a broad daylight sighting of a cylindrical object clear the entire horizon in a matter of like two seconds from the Lindsay airport to basically as far to the left as you could go and still see it. And it was a tubular cylinder and it shot across the entire horizon. And I mean, in the blink of an eye, it was towards Bob Cage. Yeah. yeah. And I, I looked at my partner, the, my girlfriend at the time, and I'm like, did you fucking see that? Because I've ar- I had already had a few, but I just, you know, that's what I mean when I say up until eight months ago, I just knew UFOs existed and that was cool. Right. This is one of those that was cool because both me and this girl I were with, saw this thing in broad daylight scoot from like the Lindsay airport as far to the left as you could. And I mean, in a second, so can completely validate there is activity like a mother in that area. My buddy would tell me, yeah, he would say, no, this happens all the time. And I go, but I ask you every fucking day about this stuff. And he goes, yeah, but you get too serious with it. So we don't even flex on you like yeah. my, my my his wife was our manager so they never they were like just don't tell him or he's gonna freak out and he's gonna start talking about everything and i'm like but that's the good yeah. shit it it has me curious now i'm not sure about Lindsay, so i i know about the like i don't know if you like while you were there if you heard about halliburton yeah i performed um, or from Lindsay all the way halfway across canada then all the way back and then down into toronto i was there for a, a month and then nine days and then a week. And I've had, oh, I had an okay. abduction in the airport hotel and I beat the shit out of <laughs> what I thought was a guy. And then there was no one there on camera. It, it's a whole oh, fucking wow. story. I could get into it, but I've Canada it. has, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so I was, I was born in Halliburton and like, and, and grew up Halliburton Minden area. It's on the 45th parallel. So that's, um, you know, like for those that, that aren't familiar or whatever, that's like exactly halfway between the North Pole and the equator. Damn. And it's also the parallel, like it runs through, it runs through Ottawa. It runs through a lot of significant, I don't, I'm just, I don't know if it runs through New York or if it's, um, yeah. it, there's somewhere in the States anyway. But, and so <sighs> I, I really wonder if, that activity is related to that. Well, you'll get activity yeah. on every major line. Uh, get, okay. Uh, yeah. I was on a ley line by the subway system, and we just moved away from that back into the collective over here. But um, people would say, it doesn't happen over there. And I'm like, right, it happens right here. And they're like, well, that's because of you. I go, no, we're on the ley line. Right? Like, it yeah. enhances everything. So when you see them walk through the apartment, so we had this thing that would occur once a year in April. It looked like you can see another reality. Oh, so just like it is like the background separating and it would just do like a. And you, it looked like it was peeling back or peeling into each other or overlaying. And then I was there. And I saw a road on the road. There was a reptilian walking a bigger reptilian on a leash and he said, look at him. And he goes, don't look at him. And they walked by me. And then I saw the road went all the way from one way to the other. And I said, wait a second. That's the ley line. I already, I knew it immediately. I said, their road that they're walking on is whatever they're doing was a little pilgrimagey. So the next year, I was there eight years. This happened eight years, eight times. So I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And you would see them walking, and it was just different beings. It wasn't like evil reptilians or this, and you have overlays, and why is this occurring? Ayahuasca was showing me, you're blending in on the timeline here. These are the overlaps, but you're protecting this entire strip, which is why nothing happens over there, because everything's focused on you. Everyone's like, get Frank out of here. Get Paula out of here. You know, I go into the other side, and um, all the negative, the negative things, they don't like me, but they really don't like my wife. They <laughs> don't like her. 
it's it's well, weird, man. It's beyond that. It's like ayahuasca showed me that a lot of the women here, a lot, right, um, are like like her, like ayahuasca, like Mother Earth. So yeah. those people that in those women that embrace that, even the, and I'm gonna tell you, even the men that embrace the feminine side and embrace that can just do away with all these beings if they're nefarious which is why everyone yeah. dislikes certain characters which is why they stick you right on the ley line and it's never it's yeah. never for um like oh my god what a coincidence there is none of that you are meant to see it you are meant to be there your energy is to be anchored into those yeah. places yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I apparently I talk about balance. <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic, though. If without someone showing a little balance, like my wife, if I didn't have her to look at and watch what she was doing, I would be a complete rage monster at times. I wouldn't know what to do, and I would just kind of. So she creates the balance around here too, right? So it's a yeah. beautiful thing, and it it works. And we're supposed to work with what we, you know, like if you're good at doing this and I'm good at doing this, we're supposed to blend it and combine those and pull our weight. It turns, no, it turns into, I talk about this often and you as a complete, I, I complete myself. She doesn't complete me. I don't, there is no, um, oh, my soulmate or my other half. That's all bullshit. The, the, you have to create a whole circuit like the let the the number eight right when you connect your circuit and become whole that your holy circuit is created i am an individual i am source i love myself okay that's good that's good enough right there okay i'm here to do a good thing or whatever and you meet another for me it's like my wife she's a complete she's complete she don't need me she don't need any anyone she chooses me. She loves me. She's like, you don't get out of this unless I take you out of this. Like, I'm here for that. Okay. But we're both complete. It does this. The, the, the eight turns into an infinity, connects the two people, and you will see magic on a scale you have never seen before. I make mean, magic with my wife. That's like, whoa. Everything from speaking to animals all the way to creating things, just like carpentry things, for example, where I fell short, she knew exactly what to do. And instead of hemming and horn and being like, man, I don't want to listen to this chick. I listened to my wife. I'm like, what did you just say? Could you show me, could point to it? She point to it, bit, 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 done. How'd you know that? Oh, my dad taught me all this stuff. Well, mine didn't. Look at that. Now I know, right? Now I know yeah. how to cook and I cook for my house but there's more than that these are just simple things magic occurs spiritual magic that's that is so interesting like you just confirmed something even further um for me i he's evidence that i manifested <laughs> this this situation here because i went I, I had a talk with myself and, you know, like I had a rough go like everybody does. And it's like, OK, am I going to be a victim or am I going to just push forward? And it's interesting that both he and, and my son are born on March 4th Yeah, uh, no because victim. they are March 4th. Right. So that, and, that energy is the timeline. No victimization or victimization. Your choice. I'm fearless yeah. or I'm a victim. What do you what is your choice? It's like, no, but it's kind of like this. Yeah. No, you're either a fucking victim or you're not. And then when you choose not, you're on the other timeline. That's it. You're the hero. You're on the hero's journey. I'm not a victim. Fuck off. That's the so, woman. So that I mean, I, I made the conscious choice. I'm like, I'm not going to be a victim anymore. And it's, you know, and, 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 and even like you make that decision, it's, it's not easy. The next steps are not easy. You have to face some realities about yourself and, you know, and it, it takes time. And so I, 
I started doing it and then it snowballed and then I got really aggressive in, in, uh, at the beginning of 2018, I got really aggressive physically and emotionally. I changed my eating habits. I was going to get to the core of that because I had a feeling that things were, there was something going on. They had me on thyroid medication and I'm like, I don't want to be on thyroid medication. I'm going to heal my body. And so I, I made better food decisions and then I had the opportunity to do a, uh, a mindfulness uh, course that incorporated a lot of meditation. And it's like, all right, well, I need to fix myself. And at the time I was not in a relationship and I didn't want to get in a relationship because I, um, I knew I had work to do. And I was at that point, it's like, if I have to be a crazy cat lady, I'm not going to suck anybody into this. We're, and we're, so then I got, the fuck? we all become crazy cat people, right? Your story is my story, Don. Her story is my story is your story. Yeah. This is her all, becoming a it's warrior. Cool. Yeah. Well. So, so I, yeah. So I just, it's like, okay, it's, it's time. I've got to aggressively fix myself. And so then I started doing that. And it's like, you know what? I kind of, I miss having a buddy. I, I want somebody to share stuff with not so I don't want to depend on them but I mean if we can work together as a team that'd be pretty cool but I don't want somebody to want somebody in the past it was you know it's like I need to have somebody because I'm not complete I don't love myself I need to put it all external lesson learned right, and right, right. there was when Dawn you heal, after when you, you he they'll they'll send you 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 send you it's not they they're not sending you nothing it's like you get to you know don could have been right there floating in the background right in, right in front of everyone like paula she knows every one of my friends she grew up with every one of my friends never met her she was there yeah. the whole time she's like yeah. you don't know i go no those are my best friends what are you talking about i never met you and we're yeah as soon as it clicked i became whole it was yeah. like, oh, hello. It was magic. It was more than. Yeah, here, here's the crazy synchronicity. Um, I, I had a job in this in Bob Cajun, right? Um, and before I met her, and I mean like by a year, I had met two of her ex boyfriends, and the first time she came over for a bonfire, my <laughs> my buddy from three hours south or southwest shows up with one of her friends and they don't know shit about each other. So she shows up and there's her friend with my friend from way back. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like that is some quantum entangled shit. <laughs> You're being magnetically drawn to each other that's what happens my my yeah. best friend called me and said we're gonna go see your singer who's singing in her other group tonight because you don't get out no more i feel terrible for you let's go and then he picks me up because i was back at my grandparents he's with his girlfriend and there's paul sitting in the back seat and it was the night before easter hey who's this ah, it's, it's my friend paula i want to say hi i was like hi and then that's it. Like magic. I didn't know that you knew that he knew. It was just they brought him over. It was like, what happened? Yeah. And then I meet my so friends. I All my friends are like, oh my God, you're with Paula. Is she okay? I'm like, she's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, but how did that? I'm like, I did I didn't know her. They're like, how did you not know her? We hung out all the time. I'm like, never once did I see her, guys. Come on. Yeah. Right. And they're like, well, she was there the whole time. Yeah. So what is there... that? That's you. You can't. You got to go through the motions. You got to get out there and search. You'll notice like um, people look like uh, you. if you trace your past to now and you, you can highlight different things that you always thought was the right thing about the person it wasn't and then because you meet the person that has all the things in it and you go oh I was searching the whole time for my person this is yeah. literally my person right but we were searching the whole time it's almost like the amnesia 
the the heist that source has going on by sending us in here by us coming in by giving us the amnesia and having that amnesia we don't know what's going on and the enemy don't know when they read us they're like well he doesn't yeah. know anything he's a dummy and then yeah. source just goes crank activate and i wake up and i go ha, ha, ha. and how did i activate it i hurt myself lost my job changed this changed the way i ate they said you're never gonna walk again oh my god found ayahuasca started walking no problem right here and here we are and i'm, I'm squatting down i'm like hey eh, what's up i'm fine they, they told me by now you're gonna be a cripple i'm like oh yeah if i karate kick you will we prove you wrong right like i'm i'm yeah. i've become the example just like you're the example and you're the example dude it, the whole thing your story is my story here we go again i was told those exact same five words after a motorcycle accident you're never gonna walk again i laughed at the region's best uh orthopedic surgeon because he told me my legs were done yeah, yeah a year back. later i walked back in yeah. yeah you don't tell me i'm done dude i i was like there's right. gonna be something in this world that i will find that will help me. That's not going to be some kind of drug that I got to be stuck to that ruins my connection to uh, my soul. And uh, I just went cold turkey. I don't suggest anyone go cold turkey, but I'm a different kind of creature that way. I just wasn't used to pills and all that. So I just, I'm getting off this shit. And, um, and I, I went on the run. I found ayahuasca. Ayahuasca found me. I went on tour and then um, I was about to start the tour and someone called me that I knew and said, oh, my God, you're going to be here in Denver. Why don't you stay with me and drink ayahuasca and smoke DMT? And I was like, will it help me walk? And then they were like, oh, yeah, definitely. So I was <laughs> like, oh, I'll try it then. And that, that was the first thing I said when I when I drank it and I smoked. I was like, is this going to help me? They were like, oh, yeah, it'll help. And holy shit. I went through the magical experience and we all know the stories, but when it, what it really mattered was when I was standing there looking at ayahuasca, like, yo, I need to fucking walk mother, my back, yeah. what happened? And they were like, well, you weren't listening. So we created a scenario for you. And I'm like, oh, you created a scenario for me. You want, y'all want to help me out? And they did. I watched them rewiring shit in my head and then I had, uh, I played lacrosse division two for years. Right. So I had in football, I had a, um, a concussion. I was concussion prone 11 times right here. The side of my head, the doctor was like, please do not don't do anything. Just put your head on a fucking pillow at night and go to sleep. So don't, don't <laughs> like, what are you eating bricks and just smashing your head into the walls? And I'm like, listen, I'm done. <clears throat> so there was, um, like bruising on my brain from it so they had shown me all the results and i was like holy shit and i used to have trouble thinking and i was it was trouble it was like a, the thought would short circuit ayahuasca showed me this and was like yeah you see what the doctors told you whatever she moved her finger across my head and the main area of thought now emanated from here instead of here and it didn't short circuit nothing, right? A year later, I was back. I had to have my head checked again. <clears throat> I get the results back from all the tests. There's no scarring, nothing. Everything. The doctor was like, what the fuck? I was like, I don't know. Nobody believes me when I say one of the doctors that I went to, he had Shiva on his desk. <clears throat> and I said, oh, you, you, is that your, your, you pray to Shiva or whatever? He's like, yeah, he's really cool. I said, I, yeah, when I drink ayahuasca, he like trains me like he shows me how to be more like awesome. And he's like, you talk to Shiva. I'm like, no, I hang out with him, bro. Like, you... <laughs> like <laughs> he was in my apartment. He was in my girlfriend's throat as a baby, the throat chakra. And when I approached it and it was opening, helping her with with her chakras, he came out and I was like, "Ooh, blue baby flying out of the throat. And we were drinking ayahuasca together and he grew in the room and he turned into Shiva and he gave her advice because he was in her throat. And then I was like, oh, you need to speak your truth. And then he's like, yeah, and I'm, and I'm not going to leave your side ever. Like, I'm going to be with you, your best friend, 
the whole time. I was like, wow, it's pretty nice of you. And he's like, ooh, you wait. So I was like, I went through hell twice. And he was there with me like, yeah, it's cool. It's like I don't have a deity that I go to. I might say, oh, Jesus and shit, but I don't use that. But when when I'm under or something's going on, Shiva and, and um, Ra, who showed me my bloodline, it goes directly to them. I'm like, how did this happen? And then there's all stories behind them warring at first and then learning we shouldn't do that. <clears throat> and now both of them are helping the DNA of the other. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. They're like, yeah, well, you're not the only one. But, you know, still, you're activated. Yeah. And they show me people I that know. that should be awoke that aren't. And then they'll just reach for the ones that are. So the minute you wake up, you get bombarded. It's a, it's a ongoing forever. But if you don't pay attention from the very beginning, they kind of just go to who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> or or they hit you with a baseball bat of like nine nights in a row of uh -huh. nightmares right in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> Does they, the nightmares help though, dude? Like that's like like yeah. um, Aya would never show me anything crazy until I was kind of ready because she's like, Man, if we show you the real thing right now, you're not gonna come back. And I was like, yeah, yeah, bullshit, whatever. And then she showed me the reptilians eating people. And I went, wait, what the fuck? And she's like, see, and if you jumped into that, you would never come back here. So we're going to build towards that. And I'm like, I got to build towards that? And they're like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, well, and that's exactly the um, nightmare fuel shit that happened over those nine days is like, I, I've talked about it recently, like in recent sessions, I like, shot them in the head and watched the purple blue goo pop out of their face because you know i i've used a harmonic weapon that basically changed the frequency of the matter that used to be their face right and that's just the way she goes at some points of that war and then you come back to this reality and you're like wait a minute that that couldn't have happened and i'm like wait a minute no i was just there right it, it's I'm, those I'm kinds of you I th I believe this wholeheartedly, and I don't talk about secret space program because I don't know personally. But I'll tell you what: just like you're saying, it's happening over there, and I know it's over there, and I know it's me. But I'm right here. But it's it's yeah. just as real right now, right? Yeah. And I believe because I've had people say like yo man there's people that look um i've been around the world there's a lot of people that have been around the world we find people that look and act like each other right and we seem to yes. like how do you take like my best friend from here and he goes over some overseas somewhere and find someone exactly like me looks like me acts like me right and they're like what dude i took pictures with this guy it looks like he could be your twin brother right except he has hair maybe a mustache right and you're like weirded out by it but when <clears throat> i've had like dreams where i've laid down and i'm just barely there and i'm like wait a second and now i'm there and i'm like do you go to sleep and pop up into like a clone of you yeah like is there a clone of me because this guy looked just like me but he didn't have like i have scarring on my face i'm like he didn't have that he had like no freckles yeah. Right. And I'm like, but that was me. It was, it was me. I yeah. was me and I was running. And um, so I've seen this on the moon. I've seen this in here. Like uh, I've seen, I don't want to blame anyone, but Chinese, right. They had us yeah. like, they made clones of all these beings and we were there. It was like me, my brother, uh, Ralphie from Eye of Ra, he was there. Uh, a couple of my friends and a whole bunch of people I didn't know, but I felt like I knew when I was looking at them and they all didn't know me. Nobody knew me, but I knew everyone there. And then I watched them yeah. d start dissecting people with machetes. And I was like, whoa. And they were taking body parts. And I'm like, oh, they're taking clones, bringing them over, taking what they need from them and, get and selling them. You know, this rabbit hole is very deep. 
and really disgusting at yeah. times. And right? like the, you kind of oh go ahead. No, I was gonna say it goes from this stuff to the children, and we all know what's going on in between, but people don't really want to hear like the secret space program always it's cool, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, you're fighting these things, they eat people. Yeah. Right, they use yeah. you as a, a flesh toy. It's yeah. crazy, it's crazy what these what these oh. beings do. And it, I like what you were alluding to there because Spin and I were talking about something they mentioned in the episode as well. Is how it seems like certain similarities in that synchronicity happen, and the one that she came up with was like, my mother lost her father Harry. Well, her okay. My grandma lost her husband Harry at a very young age. He died tragically and quickly, and like this entire series of events happened. Well, it was like the worst version of what happened in her same family, the same damn program. Somebody named Harry died at a very young age, and it progressed in an entire series of events that changed the timeline of the family. It was like you could literally call it the Harry program, right? And then you guys. Yeah. Both both Harrys. So Harry uh, uh in my part of the story it was my grandfather, my my mom's my mom's father. He died when he was 46. My grandma was the same age. And then so there's one parallel um with with Don's family and my family. And then you fast forward. Dawn was was born on March 4th. My son was born on March 4th, 30 years later. Yeah. Like it's the same damn program. It's a it's a trauma program that they're imprinting on certain fam like certain bloodlines. Well, they and anyone that's using a looking glass or any kind of weirdo technology. And they're looking at anyone who would have a chance to surpass them in any way. They would implement programs yeah. to take them off yeah. the timeline. Oh, once again, yeah. highly elite, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we, we have this changed. conversation. Uh, you ever? Dude, I, I had an, an Iowa, I had a client come and back out of the experience, but I drank. And then we were supposed to drink together and I said, okay, cheers. And then he was like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I was like, what the fuck? You came all the way here and you're not going to do this. So now I have to do it. Now you're going to hang out with my wife. This is really weird. So he was like, I'm going to sit in the living room, play instruments and shit. And you're going to be under. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to move. I'm going to sit right here with you. So during the experience, I was sitting in front of a cage, like outside of the cage. And it was me my mother and my wife and I was looking at them and I heard loud noises and I could see giant cages around me and I seen a reptilian come in. They grabbed my wife, slammed, picked her up by her feet and slammed her onto the table. And then all these reptilians attacked her and just ripped her apart. So I was like, yo, what the fuck? <clears throat> this was happening. And I was sitting there going, how did this happen? How do you have, wait, so they, they do the same thing to my mother. They do the same thing to me. One of them says to me, don't worry, you're next. They wind up eating me, slam me on the table, rip me apart. I die. In the experience, I'm reborn at that point through my mother. How do you have me, my wife, and my mother exactly sitting there and having that happen to us? Are you cloning us? Was that another moment in time? a different point in history. Well, why do we all look exactly alike? When did this occur? Or are you making copies of us and eating us? Yeah. And now we're like being pulled to it because it's still a fractal of us. And we have to heal that, which is why the next thing that happened to me was I was born. I felt I was in my mother's womb and it was very healing. And <clears throat> it was an interesting experience. And then the guy that was there helped it was weird. He's like, I thought like you were being birthed. <laughs> He's like, I came over, I kissed the top of your head and I, I went like move the energy. And then you came out from under the blanket. You were like, ah. he goes, it was really weird. And I go, no, I was born at that moment. 
and I felt really good, but I was just eaten and destroyed. How is that occurring? Are they making copies? What are they doing? Who is the they? The they? Because I saw some yeah. other creatures there. Well, why are they doing and... this? Right, like. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that kind of brings to what they were talking about, too, is like non-visible beings. And I know you and I share a lot of similar thought process on, you know, what's going on just beyond our perception. You know, we're muted on purpose because it would drive us crazy or whatever. Um, but like I know even in our own home in the last month, me and her son, well, maybe it was a couple months ago, we were there was only the two of us here. Neither of us were talking. And all of a sudden you hear, hello. Yeah, a month ago. And I was like, what? And he's like, what? And I'm like, you heard that, right? And then you heard, hello. And it's like, okay, I know Frank explained to me that they're just right there. And they like to watch you in the fucking shower. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You watching me shave. Uh, right, fucker, what do you want? The car door closed, too. Yeah, like we, we've had people pull in and close a car door on a car that doesn't exist. Like even the dogs will react. Like somebody will pull into a laneway and there's nobody there. Because right? the real so reality there, is right in front of us. We're not in the real reality. We're in the reality that we say is the real reality, but it everyone else is like you're in the false matrix. You're dreaming. Right? You're in the dream and you're gonna wake up. What yeah. does that mean? You're gonna just shut off the mechanism but they're not really shutting it off as much as you're being allowed to just activate your it's so it's an individual thing. So as I activate, I'll then see more. So as I give myself yeah. to the process, you see more and more. So they're right there in front of you. I don't really have too much trouble with ghost spirits or because it's not none of that. It's a, the other reality, the real reality. <clears throat> and you're going from a two strand to a three strand to a four strand activation inside your DNA. There's no junk DNA act. You're activating that stuff. That's your dormant DNA that they tell you that. So you just believe bullshit. So you try to, you, you try not to find out that you can activate. Okay. So yeah. as you do that, the matrix collapses around you and you begin to see more but David Icke talks about this outside of your visual light uh, that you can that you actually see out of that range. Right there is more stuff. It's right there in the yeah. environment. You can't interact with it because you don't see it. Right? People are like, well, then I should be walking into walls. I'm like, that's not how it works here. You're yeah. you're okay. First of all, you're in a hologram. It's a holographic structure being held together by an organic consciousness. So every thing here on the base level is pixelated which means nothing's here except your consciousness right so yeah. <clears throat> you're gonna just tune into a different frequency on the radio station and there's gonna be that point where it goes from what we're used to and we're listening to and then as you change you go rawr, 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 and then now it's picking up the new one okay well it's moving through you're gonna see shit you're gonna feel shit you're gonna think ghosts are real demons are everywhere this is happening then you snap into the real reality <clears throat> where you can interact with these things and you don't need magic and this and that it's there all for your taking all for your learning ability here you're being yeah. forced to not pay attention to it so we're coming through it ourselves so holy shit Ra's in my basement no one's gonna fucking believe me but they're like wake up wake up whatever it takes we'll yeah. fucking send spider-man bro if whatever it takes you want a cat that yeah. talks whatever it takes Space jesus <laughs> right whatever it takes well, I have no, and I have no, no thing with this space Jesus. So when the, he showed up, I was like, "The fuck is this hippie doing here?" Right, but it, it was really him. <laughs> I, I think, I think you've absolutely nailed it there because it's, it's really just we're going to come into a new perception of different densities that these things are in, right? That, I, I know I sound reality. like, what's that? That's like so, so. If we if we're in a bubble, right? We're inside the bubble, and then 
everything else outside of the bubble is re- and around the bubble is real. But inside the bubble is a controlled scenario. When they shut that fucking effect off and it goes to base reality, base reality is already everything that exists. So it's like, holy shit, dragons are real. This is real. You know, that's not a ghost. It's somebody's fucking grandparents. It's your ancestor. It might be a trap yeah. spirit, but he sees you and he's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on because he's in a layer of the onion. There's like this yeah. layers that you have to. This is when when you're tuning your frequency from one station to the next. First, it's normal, just like we're talking now, and then you change it. In that, in those moments, those things are living and existing in those sounds. Each little peck of a sound is a different dimensional overlay, and there's just think of them as like windshields or or lenses. And then, or like photographs, and there's so many, and then all of a sudden it tunes into the new one, and welcome to the new show, and here we are. So it's all existing, all inside of that, right? But it's easier to contact or deal with on like, let's say the 5D level, all these other things. It's a much easier thing because demons don't just jump out and bite at you and you don't have to worry about shape shifting reptilians. They're they're not shape shifting. They're using tech, just like and they live. Um, but nonetheless, right? You got demon face syndrome now, right? Because you know yeah. you're gonna see what's running the human having these. I was telling my mother, I look at you. You're a light body. You're a beautiful light body being, right? She goes, yes. So are you? I go, right. Then the the demon thing that was on the. It was on the news. So she was like, bro, that's crazy. Why would they do that? And I explained to her, what if um, you surpassed the ability for them to use technology on you? Their tech doesn't work on that high of a frequency. It just doesn't work. But it's only you. And you look over and you're like, whoa, what's that? And you're seeing the overlay of what's running the human having the experience. So everyone's having a human experience, but not everyone here is human. Yeah. Right? So you're like, what? Right. That's a yeah. demon running the suit. Literally a demon. That's an NPC. That one is an android. You you could tell by their energetic yeah. signatures. Well, <laughs> that yeah, one's I, wearing I, a mask. <laughs> you're absolutely on the nose for something that I just had revealed in the session. That's gonna, I and I, I'm not gonna become one of those book guys. I swear, but I'm writing a book. Um. <laughs> It unlocked in that session that you were listening to with your partner. There was a thousand times more that I just have to put pen to paper about in that experience that I saw you in, actually. And it it is exactly on par with exactly what you're explaining about once we figure out the control of our densities and our frequencies and being able to shift back and forth it's phenomenal like she keeps they, smiling at me because it's like, oh my god you just said they, that <laughs> i told you when they came into my house they were using a frequency gun on me and the et came in and then he was holding the weapon and then the the humans were like roughing me up they were like one of them hit me in the back of the head with his gun and everything and the et was telling them all you got to do is turn it on it looked like the ghostbuster thing without the backpack and then he's like, you just turn it on. And then it it looked like it ring. I, I, this is how I described it. Donuts that moved quickly and got bigger and bigger and bigger. So they were like concentric rings. That's what they wound up calling them. So he hit me with it. And I was trying to get up off the floor. And then I stood up and my body was on the floor. But I was standing up. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was out of my body. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I'm sorry. They, I'm just showing her the, my notes of explaining from my session what you're talking about. Yeah, well, it's a frequency <laughs> weapon, and then I, I, I had to fight my way back in my body. They were telling me, they were telling each other. He was telling the men. Uh, I guess he was training them how to use this. That it looks like they won't know if he had a heart attack. They won't know if he had an aneurysm. If it's drugs, you could fucking say whatever you want. So he turned it up, and then. I was standing with them and they all looked at me. It was my light body, right? And the ET goes, don't worry, he can't do anything to you like that. And I was like, oh yeah. 
and I tried a few things, nothing worked. So I jumped back in my body and I got back in. It took me like a few seconds. I had to try twice. I couldn't get in. It was like a bubble around the body from being hit with this frequency. When I broke in, I just stood up. I got up off the floor like like Hulk Hogan. And then they were all just standing there. And the ET was like, had the, the he had it cranked. And I was just looking at him. And then I said, yeah, that ain't going to work no more. And then the guy just went boom and hit me in the head and dropped me. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's fucked up. And they all bounced. And uh, my wife came out screaming, get out of my house. Oh, my God, what's happening? They came in through a portal. They left through a portal. I was like, holy shit. This yeah. is crazy. But that yeah. frequency, my body matched it. My body aura matched the frequency after i got knocked out of my body and came back in and then i was able to stand there and they had that weapon on high and he was holding it at me and i was just like nah that ain't gonna work bro and then i got hit right in the back I, my head was split open i've never been hit like that and i've been jumped before i was like this dude split my head open with a, the back of a gun or something i was like it was a a melon on the back of my melon. <clears throat> I was like, well, I wouldn't want me to be up in the room angry either. So do your best. Yeah. But the, the men, I was like, yo, you guys are fucking sellouts. I was like, every one of you that are here, by the way, you leave an energetic signature that I, as a shaman, am aware of. I'll find every one of you just by looking at your eyes. I know it's you. Right. And then they were yeah. looking at me like, oh, can he do that? Like, can he do? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. But this little I said, I don't know what this thing is. I said, but you all look alike. And I don't even mean to be rude like that, but you do. I said, but I'll figure it out and I'll find you, too. Eventually, in the end, in the end, they were all rounded up. <laughs> I did an entire show about this. It was like months later. That same portal opens in my living room and I start completely shaking. I'm like, I'm going to die tonight. They're going to kill me. And then other yeah. characters came out. Other beings came out. These Anubis looking characters came out and they just said, come out here. And I, I was sitting in my chair and I was like, what, what's going on? And they brought the ETs out and they just stood in front of me. And I was like, I don't, I don't know any of these. Oh, wait a second. That one right there. And then I said, what are you hiding in the fucking back? They brought him right in front of me and they, the Anubis character, it wasn't Anubis. He looked like Anubis. Yeah. There was a couple of them. He said, tell him. And then he goes, I, I just want to apologize. It was the first apology I've ever gotten from anyone but my wife <laughs> about anything. <laughs> right? And I was like, wait, what? He's like, we, we, have, um, we have to do what we're told. We're like of the one. So if, if you come in and say, you're going to do this or we're going to kill you, I'm going to just go do it. I don't care what it is. And I'm like, I understood that. I understood having to work for someone that you don't want to work for. I was like, but I think you're a little bit full of shit. I was like, thank yeah. you. Though. In that, the end, you will love actually, your enemies. <laughs> I was that like, actually what? ties into something. That ties into something they were talking about. And it's the greys don't even want to fucking do this anymore. Right? Yeah, They've kind of figured they're, they're a slave race. What's that? It's lame to them now because everyone knows it's not going to fucking work. If the if the Greys yeah. just asked for our help, it would work. If you really need yeah. help with your race and getting your thing back, you steal DNA. That doesn't work. You can't steal from source. You can't steal from the creator and think that it's going to be a perfectly. But if I offer it to you and tell you how much I love you and give it to you lovingly, it'll fucking work perfect might take a few times because you might be the issue but the frequencies yeah. change and source allows the creation to occur but if you steal it if you rape it if you pull it if you do it under subversion it's not going to work right you're going to get something but you're not going to get what you're looking for that, you're not going to get my actually, essence yeah 
that actually brought me to another thing that spin made me think of <laughs> is they were talking about the breeding programs. Okay. And this is somewhere my head has never gone. I figured I partied my boys to sleep years ago, right? Because I had a series of relationships where it was like a 50, 50 shot. And the one girl was like, no, no protection, but it's okay. I can't. Right. So we dated for years. All three of those women ended up with endometriosis. And the one directly after we dated got pregnant. So Spin posed the question, have you ever thought that your exes might have been taken for the breeding program because of you? And, and That's interesting. That was, yeah, like I have three exes that I dated for a long period of time that all ended up with the same medical condition. That all said they were either on the pill or could not get pregnant. And then the one immediate, like within a month or two after we stopped dating, got pregnant by her new boyfriend. And I was like, what the, f when she put those puzzle pieces together, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I, I, I know I'm in this program and that program, but I didn't think I was in that program. Um, so I never had a kid or a scare up until I was with my wife my entire life. I was a rock star for a while, 20 years. <laughs> and I'm like, now you're getting me to think. I always thought it was maybe me or something like that. But then as soon as I got here, it changed. So I, I couldn't, you know. I Dude, they've done yeah. stuff to me where I would be uh, left to, I guess, do something with a, like the fem a female and I knew people were yeah. watching. And then in the reality, as you're deep into it, you see that you're not with a female. You're with like yeah. a different creature. And then you're like, yo, what the fuck is this? Right? And like, you're just like, and they're trying to pull it out of you in every different way. And I'm like, this is disgusting. This is weird. I would never do this, but you're seeing something that you're seeing Pamela Anderson in your head. You're having the best time of your life, but something's off. Right. Yeah. Something's off. And then see it. It just, the illusion crashes and you're like, wow, they're taking my genetics this way, whether they're stealing them one way or trying to get me to give it through love that way. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe if he's, feels like he's in love it's like no but you're still tricking right like you can't trick source and my higher self is source yeah i'm just and source it, so you're stealing it <laughs> that that was something else that they talked about too is the genetics um how it seems like you know they were specifically talking about caucasians but i know you had shared in one of the times that we've talked the whole nursery rhyme fee fi fo fum where they can smell the creative specific... blood. Yeah, right. And right. that's the way they hunted. It was literally the smell of the blood. So what is I, I know your part on that, but what's your take on certain races going after certain races, like certain beings going after certain races? All right. So check this out. This would be an easy one. Say we're we're in the grand experiment, and then you have experiments going on within experiments within going on, and then you send the giant into the town to hunt. Right. But you're like, yo, giant, you can't you you can't eat anyone with a positive blood. Because that's our people. So the the giant comes in and goes, I smell the blood of the this guy, the Englishman. Right. What they're looking for is the creator. They're looking for straight creators. That's what they're looking for. He's like, I want to eat that one. But they there's a certain blood that is associated with us where you get that RH negative stuff going on, right? So they could just come out and smell that. We don't know what, like, um, all right. So a guy that I know came to me and said, I'm being abducted every night. So I looked in on him and he was a gangster. Uh, and he was actually being abducted with his family, but they were all those beings just having yeah. a human experience, but he didn't know that because he has amnesia because he's scared. You know, he's scared. He's, he knows me from the street. He knows he sees me all the time. He knows what I'm about. So he, he approached me about it. And meanwhile, the ETs are like, yo, Frank, back up, get out of here. 
you don't belong here. This is none of your business. This is our experiment. He's on the ship with us. He's one of us. So I'm like, oh, shit. So how can you delineate, right? How can you walk through a crowd and tell who's who? Right? There's yeah. got to be something more. What are you seeing? What are you smelling? What are you tuned into? What are you vibing on? That's us. Because we're the super battery. Yeah. Right? Or if you wanted to clear out a certain kind of person, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say this the wrong way, but like a blood type or a bloodline associated, you can send creatures out there that would be able to pick up on that shit and just take you out and leave everybody else alone. I mean, viruses do that. They target specific people, beings, right? Yeah. So what if you wanted to get rid of all the NPCs in one shot? And it was like some kind of weird EMP, like an organic EMP, like the solar flare. Yeah. Something that disrupts um, the system completely. And then other things would be like specifically targeted at those beings. And how do we know that those aren't specific races from somewhere else doing agreeing to come here to be part like Lyrians? Like, how do we know that's not a whole group of them having that specific blood type? Or people from Mars that came here. No. Yeah, I just got mind wiped every fucking time. God no, damn we're, it. We're having we're having aftershakes here. After, after we had the earthquake yesterday. Yeah. Here in the Bronx, where it was the day before, we're having like aftershocks nonstop. Real oh dear. Uh, yeah, this whole house just shook just now twice. Really? Yeah, I was like, "What the? What was that?" We're still having them. Yeah, that shit emanated oh, out of New Jersey, very close. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, we had a pretty big earthquake. It was four point seven, and it was right here in the Bronx. Yeah. It was right out of Jersey. Came right here, hit everyone here. My whole house was like rocking. <laughs> um, and then it just every every couple of hours, man, you feel it. It feels like the subway's under me now, but there's no there's no subway line here. Interesting. That's not. I really have to this is why I smoke so much weed because you can't trust anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, no, and I I know I've told you off air like the day I got into this whole DMT meditation and figuring everything out, and like that's when I figured out about the holographic experience because I basically sat. And got so far in and explained to myself how I don't actually physically exist as a solid here. And then I came back out of it and I'm like, you asshole, why would you tell you that? <laughs> right? Because I'm just like, well, now I don't exist. Great. Dude, okay. I was in the room and I disappeared and there was just pink energy. And then I'm like, where is everyone? And they're like, well, you're holding the whole thing together. And I'm like, oh, this is fucking weird. I'm like... This yeah. is, and then I had a client and it happened with both of us and he goes, nothing's real. Nothing exists, but this pink energy and it's me and you. And I looked and I was like, yep, there it is again. We just changed right into it. And I was like, it, we were just mixing together in the room. And then yeah. that mixture holds together <laughs> this whole thing. Yeah. You, you basically become source flesh. form for a second. The microphone. The whole fucking thing. There's nothing there. <clears throat> I've been in areas and in layers where I was like on a ship and they just have like a platform and then it looked like a half court basketball. And then each creator had that amount of space and we were all next to each other, but there was nothing there. Right. And then a screen drops in front of us and the floor looks like like you're like for me it was a beach i immediately felt like i was on a beach i looked down and i said what the hell's going on i was just on the ship and everybody was staring at me <clears throat> and i stepped off the platform and i saw these two balls of uh, like floating around me projecting the image at me in every direction and i turned there was another there was another one so there was three non-stop on me and i never left the platform but i when i was on the platform i'm here and I'm like, what is that all about? And they're like, they were showing me a Taurus field. And they were like, listen, the Taurus field's moving, not you. 
And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, you don't, you're not even really there. You think you're there. You believe you're there. You exist because you're there, but you're really not. Nothing exists there. And I'm like, are we in a computer? Yeah. It made me immediately think we were in a supercomputer. And they're like, no, what you did was good. You went into density. Like you went further into one of the layers. Yeah. And be to have the experience because you're source. So you can do this. And I'm like, wow. And they're like, yeah, now you're getting pulled out. And everyone's starting to get, their, you know, the matrix. Everything's going to fall away. You guys got to see what's really going on. I question being on the ship all the time because I'll be on the ship and there's me in a tank sleeping. All right. And it's like a bigger, more jacked version. And I'm looking, I'm like, that's me. Yeah, that's me. What is, how is he, how am I there and here? And then how come when I'm over there, I'm this little purple guy that he has a sword, by the way. I have this, he's like a, a commander on a ship or something, but he's, he's not human. And he, I'm like, man, he's got a, he's got like a half cape and stuff. I was like, this guy's weird. And they're like, he turns and looks at me and I go, man, that's me. Get the beard. And I was like, oh. and I'm like, how, how am I there? Frank. Is the purple guy from a Crystal City? I don't know, but he's awesome. Okay, <laughs> because I've been the purple guy too. In one of my regressions, I was the purple guy in a Crystal City. He showed himself to me on the deck of a ship that I was standing on. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Right? And then he just looked at me all like awesome. It looked like a movie. And then he like revealed himself. And I said, oh shit, that's me. How? How is he there and I'm here? And he was smiling at me. He didn't say a fucking word. And then I I talked like crazy. I was like, look at this guy. He's amazing. He's a... And they're like, yeah, he loves himself. <laughs> and I'm like, how is this? How is he there? And I'm here at the same time. And they're like, all of yeah. that is you. Like you being source is something different right like everyone's having an experience some of us are having a different type of experience where you're recognizing the other versions of you right there like when someone comes to you like your higher self or um like some kind of energetic character shows up and you're like oh um it's this character and he told me this good news and now i'm ready for the for more greatness and it's like, yeah, that's just you sending you, you. Does that make sense? And I'm like, yeah, because yeah. I was on the, I was outside of a ship once and there was a robot on the ship and it was fixing something and it saw me and it came up to me and grabbed me. It had like, it wasn't tentacles, but it was like legs. It was like a red eye. And then when it scanned me, it was alive. It wasn't a robot. It was a consciousness was in there and then it it was me and then it looked at me and was like i love you and then i was like get off me and then they were like okay frank's not ready for that yet and i go what the fuck and then they pulled me away and i said no that's me bring me back i want to see myself and then they were like you're having multi-dimensional experiences different characters they didn't happen already they're happening right now yeah. They're all happening. So when you cross and meet these guys, you know, I, like, wow. I get overlay all the time. I get overlay all the time. Um, yeah, that's great. Because you get their like, info. Go ahead. Right? Like, if you meet the purple guy and give him a hug, right? You'll get yeah. his frequency. You can You can achieve things that he did does easily right like when i i couldn't finish i knew how to make dmt never making it never even looked it up or nothing and then when i got to the end i couldn't i kept melting it i couldn't figure out what to do so i under ayahuasca i said i don't know what to do i can't figure this part out and then they sent me to me who was like a scientist guy that would makes dmt and then he was just like, oh, yeah, you're not doing this with the temperature right. And I go, all that for that. And he go, gave me a hug. And then I knew the math behind it. And then I was yeah. like, oh, this is mad yeah. easy. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, you just melted her head because we just had that conversation last night about <laughs> sending yourself self answer questions. So, yeah, she, she's she's just going to spark another one. Um, <laughs> be, before we, I, I know you're busy and moving, and I appreciate how long you've hung in here. Uh, just on a personal note, they mentioned it, and we have it happen all the time. What is your take on other beings leaving like calling cards, like bruises? Um, her and I woke up. Uh, with matching injection marks, like literally in the IV vein, like on the same night, we both woke up and went, what the fuck is that? Right. Um, all three of us heard the, the roof of the house peel off like a Ziploc container, woke up to like Aspen fresh air in our mouths as if we had just gotten unhooked from o- oxygen and dropped back in here. So they could have just, I know that's took- kind of all right. So they take us. <laughs> This is what I saw on my last eye experience, which was pretty recently. They take us before you blink your eye and it was closed and put you back. Right? So I I questioned this and I said, how are you going to do that if I'm smoking a blunt? Right? So I'm smoking this blunt and I'm like, oh, you're going to take me now? You're going to take me? I'll know. I'll know if you take me because the blunt will be out. It'll be hours later, whatever. As I went like this, I was like, what What happened? And I saw them in the background. And then the blunt was still going and perfect. So I, I looked at it and I went, you motherfucker, you just took me and put me back? And then they said, <laughs> they, they went like this. So picture a um, the old photo um it's like you, you you take photos and you put them in the slide and the slide yeah. is like a circular piece. So it's an yeah. individual frame and you could just press the button and it show, shows you that projection up. Okay. So they were showing me in that moment. So they're, we're made up every so many whatever milliseconds or whatever. It's like one flat picture. Yeah. Okay, so they went into the picture because the time doesn't work for them the way it works for us. And they just said, oh, that's where he's talking shit, right where he's smoking the blunt. Just pick that up. (laughs) They pulled it up and then just went, looked at me, did something and put it back. And then I was like, (laughs) how did you do that? (laughs) Still goes. They're like, nah, you stupid. They're like, watch this. And then they did it again. So I'm like, holy shit, you're fucking you guys are cheaters, right? I was like, hey, this sucks. So then they were like, no, no, it's good that you know this because the enemy attacks creators this way. So the enemy will go back in your Rolodex when you're a kid. Yeah. And they'll do it right now at the moment. And you've already experienced this, but they could do it there. And then that kid has to go through it again and because they already did it to you. But they're like, nah, it's a good point. We'll just do it again. We'll see if he fucks up again. And they split you into timelines, which is why um, I met my younger self. And then he was afraid to go into the closet because there was uh, we thought there was a monster in the closet, but it was me. And I was coming through ayahuasca. So he came into he saw me and was like, oh, there's a man in the closet. What the fuck? And I said, no, don't be afraid. I'm you. It's like I had this awesome conversation with little me. And then I explained to him, you don't have to be afraid of this, 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 and this. I already fucking did it. No matter what anyone tells you, look at me. Trust me. I'm cool. I'm a fucking wizard, bro. Super science. Fucking superhero. Trust me. Go left. Don't go right. So that timeline corrected itself. He gave me like a high five and a hug. And then he went on and lived this other life, not affected by what the reptilian pulled on the on one of the cards right so their lenses they yeah. just pop them out and put them back in so when they do that to you you could be sitting there smoking and your cigarettes not not lose nothing and you be you could have been gone 20 fucking years bro they could just stop it yeah. and put it right back yeah i'm I, like yo that's i've talked i i've talked about it a few times where i had one driving and I don't know if they're rushing or, you know, everybody makes mistakes. It was the Arcturians, same deal, took my slot out because it, the time doesn't exist to them the way it does to us, right? So really no concept of it. 
like you said, they took me out. Watch your, but... They could watch your whole thing while they're just standing there and then pick anywhere at any time. Yeah, but what happened was they missed it by like two minutes. They got fucking around or something. Because I showed up all of a sudden at the turn I was supposed to make. And for the next two days, I was just an irritable asshole going off on everybody. And then I had an astral experience while I was sleeping where they explained to me, look, we're going to put you back now. We we missed it. Sorry, we got doing something else. And I was like, yo, do you know what you just did to the 3D third density me for like two days? I have been a dick. Well, <laughs> it, what that does is, is that they... I notice when they, that occurs, when they're off, your your heart rhythm is off with every, like the reality, like it's Earth. So they'll fix me and go, we have to shut you off for a second to take a deep breath and I'll let it out. And then it's like you die. And then they, it's like you just let everything out and you're, there's nothing and they shut it off. And you're like, bro, I exist. Nothing hurts. Boom. They turn it right back on. And you're like, oh, that feels great. And your heart beats normal again. Because you're out of frequency yeah. with what you're supposed to be. So you become a douche. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been through this. I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I'm having a heart attack. No reason at all. I'm a healthy guy. Why? Yeah. They're like, fine, eat some I, mushrooms and shut up. Pro tip, okay. and they're they like, haven't oh, done it since. Yeah, man. Dude, they do it way more than we think. And... Oh. I was on the ship once and then I was the light body, but they had my body in a tank and I, they brought my son out to me. So I have a son. He's much older. And then he's like, a, a, like a good looking teenager. And he's talking to me and I'm like, look at me. I'm a golden light body. And why do I have a son on the ship? That's not giving me ultimate dad respect. I was get, I was breaking everyone's chops. So they go, Frank, whatever you do, keep talking to the kid. Don't look at the tank. So I turn around and look at the tank. And they fucking disperse <laughs> my body into the liquid. Boof. And it's just green liquid. The body is gone. Yeah. And I go, what the fuck did you do to my body? And they lowered a spine. It was like a... It looked like a 3D printed spine, bro. They called it... It was red. And the guy... I go, what is that supposed to be? And he goes, that's the Demon Slayer 5000. I go, you guys are all the way here in the future, and that's the best fucking name you came up for that. And the guy goes, it's a good fucking name, Frank. <laughs> so I go, I know this guy, because he would have not said that to me on the ship. And then he's like, relax yourself. We're going to... And they formed my body around... They lowered this thing into the tank and then brought my body back, but it was a hologram. And then they were, like, tuning and fixing shit with it. And then brought the body back. And they said, oh, that should help your back and neck now. And every demon should be afraid of you. Every single one of them. No one's going to like you being around. I'm like, why? Because I'm the Demon Slayer 5000, right? And they're like, it's a great <laughs> name. You should use it. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll make the T-shirt. Don't worry about it. So I, I I did a show about this when it happened. I go, this is the weirdest thing. Because I was with clients when it happened. So I had like an ayahuasca client on the carpet in front of me having an experience right next to me. And we were both seeing it while the third person was like, OK, I can't be in the room with you guys because the ship's coming and I got to go lay down. So I was like, what do you mean <laughs> the ship's coming? And the ship just came into the house. We we're on like on the in the on the basement level. And we couldn't tell if we went into the ship or if the ship formed around us or just dro it dropped in and then everything matched. And then we were just on it. I was like, how did yeah. you do that? And they yeah. were like, don't worry about it. Just keep just keep having a, you know, a go, a go at your yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Go ahead. No, I'm just I'm just making notes for our bathroom oh. chats later because yeah. <laughs> we, we tend to smoke in the bathroom and have some of the most fascinating conversations. <laughs> and That's the, the reason that we were asking about like Leave, leaving like obvious signs like her and I both like I said woke up with like the injection marks but like yesterday she woke up with like what looks like a broken toe except it's not right so, and it's like so you, what do you guys feel about the idea of like alright we, we talk about the ships the ships that's great what about other people knowing that this is occurring and happening to us and then wanting to know what happened to us when they take us. So they take us. Does that make sense? Right. So you have an experience yeah. where, Oh, look, it's the ship. And then 
you start to unravel that you had an experience with them. But immediately afterwards, something else occurs. You have marks on your body and there's other things now associated. I feel like a lot of times when we go or get taken and or abducted, we also get taken and abducted by our own people who know that we were just taken and abducted. And then that's where a lot of these problems come in. They're the ones uh, drugging you, stabbing you with shit. Because I don't think the ETs right now are allowed to do none of that stuff. Like, I've only had uh, good experiences for the last year. And, yeah. it, like, no, it's almost I, like hands off. But if we're having yeah. it, that doesn't apply to humans, bro. And they've, they've come yeah. in my house and beat my ass. No, I, I think you're absolutely right, because in that session that I'm going to be writing about, like, I figured out a lot of shit, like, they were using voice to skull, because I've always had a lot of ability to, like, walk, talk, sleep, or, sorry, eat, like, even rationalize while I'm asleep, so they could tap me from outside of my house, right, and then basically the same portal you're talking about that was in your living room, they would walk me outside like six steps to the left, turn down the stairs. And I'm completely still asleep, but they're just telling me like a, a friggin' internal GPS, like Tom Tom or something. And they take me outside no, and then crazy. another dimension. This kid. Oh my God. This just flash. So my buddy who lives in Florida said that he he's been with a lady for a while and she has a kid and he's a teenager so the kid went nuts one night, right? And then in the house, they had to calm the kid down. But another kid on the street wound up committing suicide that night. Follow me on this. And that kid went to school with this kid. So weeks later, go by. I, I, I don't want to talk to my friend about it. I feel like when he's ready, he'll tell me. So he tells me this whole fucking thing. He goes, yo, the, the kid came to me and was like, Yo, there's these white vans that drive down the street, right? And they fucking broadcast at us, at, at the kids from the school, and they try to make us kill ourselves. He goes, that's why I went crazy. I've had a few, he had a few episodes. And he goes, every time I've had one of my problems, there's that white van's been on the block, period. And at the school all the time. So he was like, what are you talking about? And so he says, no, they broadcast a frequency that tells you to kill yourself. And then you go fucking kill yourself. And they're looking for the weak ones. And then they use it yeah. um, like as a manipulation tool for the media saying, oh, it was this or it was that. But meanwhile, it's them it was pursuing the weakest link and then having that one do their bidding. Which and it's most of the oh. time it's a suicide, you know, and absolutely right because like you know that uh, the movie that they live, you know, I know everybody that knows is a fan of it, right? It I lived near one of the region's biggest CBC broadcasting towers, and that town had like hostage takings, suicides. Um, I went home at a very young age because I got about three quarters of the way home with my mother driving the school bus, and all of a sudden I heard, "You should kill yourself. You should Man. kill yourself." It it's wasn't like a me. Testing ground. They, yeah, this and... kid was explaining like they broad sweep the area and they grab whoever activates inside and they'll yeah. know. Yeah, that's fucking creepy, oh, man. You're... That's, that's what they a, did to me. And a... that's how they would get me out of my house as a little kid. I woke up at the nobody will know where this is. It's probably watching this, but the Kemble Arena, which is about a good mile down the road in southwestern ontario in the middle of winter in my pajamas and went and sat in the snowbank if it hadn't been for my sister's best friend's dad coming home from shift work i'd have froze to death in the snowbank because they told me to leave my room that's crazy they right walked me out of my house this is what happens so like, man. and then they go oh well he was yeah. just sleepwalking or something or or they do yeah. this just happened it's like nah when I've relived the abduction experiences, I've had a couple where they just grab me and take me. They'll do something where I'm I'm completely capable internally, hundred percent, but externally, 
I cannot control my body. Yeah. They like just hijack that shit. I can't move, but my eyes move fine. And then you can make me walk over to you, take my clothes off, do all kinds of weird shit. It's like, wow, this is fucking weird. So you guys can just control yeah. people like that and then make them forget. Yeah. But you know what it is? Your higher self doesn't forget the layers that you're made up of that oversoul on us that we're trying to fit more of into the body by healing ourselves and fit getting our fractals back. <clears throat> it always knows whether you're sleeping and when you're awake, it knows. So whenever the bullshit's going down and they're taking you and doing that, it's logging that. And then eventually you're going to be awake for one of those experiences where you can say no. Cause I noticed this is a big thing. I, I noticed one, one guy was able to do it by using Jesus's name, which I thought is really weird <clears throat> because when it happened to me, I just said no. And it stuck. Yeah. They were like, what? And I was like, the answer is no. Like, I'll fucking wrestle you for it right now, bro. And they were like, no, you're contracted. You're contracted. And I was like, no. And they were like, well, I guess not. And they just left. I said, oh, these motherfuckers were lying. There's no contract. <laughs> I didn't yeah. sign nothing so these evil guys could come in here and berate me while I'm half asleep. What are you, nuts? I was like, there's children around here. Like, you guys doing this to kids? It's like Monsters, yeah. Inc. For real. If you guys haven't seen yeah. that, you should watch it. Yeah. That shit is crazy. 100%. No, no, no. Right um, when I when I first saw the reptilian, I said, "Oh, we should work together. That'd be dope. You, you could be like my Chewbacca." He was like, "I would eat you," and I was like, "Oh, you're one of those guys. You're you're like that." And he's like, "No, we don't talk to the cattle most of the time." I go, "Cattle? Damn, you guys just it's like that." And they were like, "Yeah, it's like that." I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> They were like, yeah. like this, you're nothing. You're just food. But on the other end, you guys keep coming back. So you're a problem on the end. You you yeah. become like this massive issue to us. And I'm like, to you or to everyone, they're like, oh, to us. And I was like, oh, good. I was like, I don't, what are you talking? I was like, and they're right. Every button they pushed, I pushed the other button right next to them. Like, you yeah. won't do this because we'll fucking do this. And I'm like, yeah, try it, right? And then the yeah. galactics would interfere. They're like, Frank's just saying no to everything. He's learned to say no and fuck off and whatever. And before you know it, yeah. you start working with all the ones that want to change. All the reptilians yeah. that are good or, or, or the, the demons that want to get the hell out of hell. Right? They come to you for help. Yeah. They won't come to you to scare you because you ain't going to get scared. They'll be like, please help me. And you just realize yeah. the fractals of other people that need to go heal and go back. There are friends and family wearing that outfit for the time. And then when the time's up, time's up. You give everybody a choice and so let them choose. I, ch I said to my dragon, you can choose to come with me. He was being a pain in the ass. I said, or you could stay here with everyone else. And by the way, everyone else here gets the choice. You could come with me. And they were like, get out of here. We hate you. And then I said, do you speak for everyone? And they were like, nope. And all these dragons started turning white. And as we rose up in frequency, they changed from these dark colors to like bright white with blue eyes and a whole bunch stayed and stayed evil. I was like, look, you give them the choice. All of a sudden, we got new friends and family members. And you realize their soul fractals. Don and Frank were stuck down there. And now they're back. Now you're free. And all of a sudden, Don's awareness goes up. Frank's awareness goes up. You're like, what's happening? It's like, well, you're returning more of you to the realities. Well, Frank's awareness just activated Don's awareness and made him laugh while you were talking. Because I pretty much just figured out everybody that's in this general community seems to want to play space or interdimensional, not realizing we came down here to play Earth. Yeah. No, you want right? to. So you, you want you want to ground all of that shit here, so you can yeah. experience it here. Right. Yeah. Like the magic's not there. You're the magic. This is everything yeah. that's out there is there for you everything here everything on the inside is there for you 
when you go on the inside and you have an understanding of things and you start to interact with it, you realize like, oh, Shiva has been here for me the whole time. Space Jesus has been here for me the whole time. But so is the cat and the dog and yeah. your mother and your best friend and you're the, and you go wait a second there's something more happening and they're like he's waking up the creator's beginning to understand that this is all here for you yeah. all of these concepts and abilities and choices is for you not for them they're there waiting for you to see or hear or somehow get involved we're all at different levels in the school so it's not like, oh, yeah, we're all graduating together. No, that's not true. There's a whole bunch of non-graduates. or you, But that yeah. doesn't mean you're not graduating. It means you're going into the next grade, the level inside of you. And eventually, you will be in that position. That's, everyone yeah. is special. Everyone. Yeah. And it I think that's a perfect spot to thank you because these conversations are always just incredible, but I don't want to eat up your whole day, man. Cause I, I could talk to you all day and night. I um, love you guys. I appreciate but, you. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're going to throw on one of the sons of the songs track uh, right after this. I'll, I'll put up some ads for uh, the typical skeptic podcast. Uh, gonna shout out Canadian Spinja. She has her YouTube channel up and going and actually has some content on it. So I'll include that. And I'm also gonna enclose uh include the full disclosure now uh conference links as well. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being on, Frank. This was amazing, and see you next time. And the universe rewards bravery. My past will outlast me, ask me if I'd agree with my choices now, I'd say no, I'd ask if that's me, cause I don't recognize myself anymore, no, that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna rebel, slipping up to the plate, give a bell, feel it great, show and tell, devastate, Fresh to death. I mess around, rock my rounds, I beat that ass with my shoe. <laughs> And then now, chemical donors, how we do it on the regular with no hocus pocus. Best to step aside when we continue with the soul. Staying humble while we glide and also staying laser focused. Aware, low vibes are the ones that move slower. We have to beat them back with a little king of hocus. On the hero's journey, even if you didn't notice, I observe it all unfolding like the petals from the lotus of spice. And beat the vibe, loosen nothing but pure vibe. Pure design, and the nurses that's real. That's the deal, the appeal, the way we can still get high. The mission, freaking fly. I give you something to feed So we slap this in your face as you try and chase But our fumes leave clues that we rock inside the place Giving you what you need with no shitty aftertaste Just learn and discern to elevate your inner space Yeah, ultra high frequency, spiritual kung fu See that you're everybody and everybody is you When it all goes down, can you stand and be true? Mess around, wipe my mouth, I beat that ass with my shoe Oh yeah Spiritual kung fu See that you're everybody And everybody is you Suns break through No need for fake guru Mess around Rock my mouth I beat that ass with my shoe oh, yeah. It's another rising Sun fell diving Come on Get up 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 Smash your television sets of pieces Turn up the music, chant a mantra till the spell releases The transmission ceases, now we can create We blazing up and racing up into a higher state We all can relate, we've all been affected Tripped into prison material with the soul neglected We came to break the cycle, we came to break the mold We came to make you aware of the power you behold The light emanating from one spirit Brighten up the whole collective, no need to be near it One voice so loud, everybody hears this spooky action at a distance we're connected and, and they, they fear it. it So buckle up and prepare for the ride It's, it's suns and suns, two worlds collide Break out your prison, there's a world outside Go out and dance in the dirt and get your mind <laughs> untied Ultra high frequency, spiritual kung fu See that you're everybody and everybody is you When it all goes down, can you stand and be true? Mess around, rock my mouth, I beat that ass with my shoe Ultra high frequency, spiritual kung fu See that you're
everybody and everybody is you Sons break through, no need for fake guru Listen real, mama, mama, beat that ass with my shoe Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Separated timelines, collapse the skylines Fearless tribes arrive in the nick of time To lift your mind, now step inside Today's lesson we learn to read in between the lines These minds by design, meant to flip We keep our frequency high, then we buy the dip We got that mental material, magic that manifests Make leaps through the matrix, codename acrobats So fuck the 9 to 5, it's dark to light This time it's sunrise and midnight Sons of the sun, sun veil, fresh to death Rhyme to get you high, then continue to fly The music, the news, the mic, the sample Powerful set of MCs you can't cancel the king, the warrior, the wizard, the same Cycles that constantly spin to the brain Ultra high frequency, spiritual kung fu See that you're everybody and everybody is you When it all goes down, can you stand and be true? This is real, rock my mind, I beat that ass with my shoe oh, yeah. Ultra high frequency, spiritual kung fu See that you're everybody and everybody is you Suns break through, no need for fake guru This is real, rock my mind, I beat that ass with my shoe oh, yeah. Yeah, SOS. That's right. Sons of the Sun. Oh, yeah. Stun fell. Ah. Fresh. 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 Fresh to death.